Block will come back to introduce our third honoree, Terry McKeever. Coach Terry McKeever from the Cal Bears. Coach McKeever just completed her 22nd year as the University of California women's head coach. She was the 2012 USA Head Olympic Coach for Women. She's won three NCAA championships. Her swimmers have won 31 individual NCAA championships. She's been the 2003, 2005, 2007 world championship team coach. She has coached more than 20 Olympians, including Natalie Coughlin, Missy Franklin, Dana Vollmer, Caitlin Leverens, and Stacy Anna Stitz. Coach McKeever. Thank you. Um, it looks like a lot more people when you're standing up here than when you're sitting um, down there. But um, I, first of all, I, I just want to thank um, ASCA and the board and the Hall of Fame committee for this very meaningful and um, special honor. I, I will say it seems a little strange because I really, um, I feel like something like this uh, should, uh, I still feel like there's a lot of work to do, let's just say that. And, and actually, when I was hearing Pete talk, I was like, he can't have coached four decades. And then I was, like, I was like, wait a minute, I'm starting my fourth decade of coaching, so I'm not that old either. But um, it, it just, it just kind of, I was like, wow, okay. Um, but I think what tonight has done is it's given me an opportunity to uh, reflect and um, and I think just be appreciative of, of a couple things that I'd just like to mention. And the first one that came to mind is, is my family, and in particular, my mom. Matt mentioned that he was the youngest of six. Um, I'm the oldest of 10, so I know what you young people are like. And um, he's pro he probably was the spoiled one, and he, I'm sure, has an older brother that bossed him around just like I could line up uh, a lot of siblings. So I've been the head coach of a team for a long time, and um, my my mom swam at, um, for Coach Dalen at the LA Athletic Club, and fortunately, it was very important to her that all of her children know how to swim. So I have seen videos of just a very young person in the pool, and and uh, I started swimming uh, on a swim team at 10, and my mom was my first swimming coach, and and I really. I know that that has um, allowed us to have an amazing, um, unique relationship. Um, I know it's affected the coach I am today. More importantly, it's affected the woman I am today. And um, I really, I just really appreciate, um, you know, the, my, my whole family sacrificed to swim. We had a 25-yard pool in the backyard. Eventually, we had a 50-meter pool in the backyard. I know it sounds a little weird, but it's true. And, you know, swim practice didn't start at a certain time or end at a certain time. It started when all the siblings could um, either were taking a nap or they could ride their bike around the pool. And I have a vivid memory of my mom, you know, pulling one of them out of the pool while we were still going or racing my brothers so that I um, could achieve my dreams. And I was fortunate enough to start swimming at a national level at um, 12. And, I, I, I'm a much better coach than I was an athlete, but what it, one of the things I'm proud about my coaching career is is the um, the level of consistency of of a standard that um, I I feel that I I'm very proud of, and I, I, I kind of look at my my own career at that point um, or in kind of a similar way that just um, tried and true. Um, doing it and feel very fortunate that I'm one of the first women that was able to go to college and swim and get a scholarship. My mom went to the University of Southern California and stopped swimming as the 17-year-old. My dream, I grew up when Coach Dalen and 
um, Doc Councilman were duking it out at nationals, and I remember going to nationals and just being, oh, if I get good enough, I want to go to USC. You know, I, I want to, um, both my mom and dad went there, and that was my dream. And I had the good fortune of swimming um, for Coach Don Lamont, who's in the Hall of Fame. Um, as, as a Trojan and as an undergrad, and since sports played such a major part in my life, I originally thought I wanted to be an athletic trainer, and I have some brothers that played college football and went to a couple practices and saw the way the trainers were being treated and thought, mm, not so much, maybe. And um, so I, I got into um, education and um, really saw myself as being a uh, either a high school teacher or fourth or fifth grade teacher and I got bit by the coaching bug during my student teaching. One of my brothers came home and said, Terry, they need a JV volleyball coach and the extent of my um, volleyball experience was going to the volleyball games at USC. So I got out my book, I got and practiced and, and um, really just um, had an amazing, amazing experience. And fortunately, after a year of student teaching and coaching JV volleyball and some basketball, um, I didn't get a full-time teaching job. And the assistant at USC um, uh, got another position and Don Lamont called me back in 1985 and said, would you like to be my assistant? And so for a whopping $7,000, I was the um, assistant and figured, hey, you know, if I'm going to do this, it'd be awesome to do it, um, you, you know, do it for a little while. I probably should look at getting my master's. Guy said, everybody in the room's been an age group coach. You're looking at someone who the only thing they've ever done is coach college, which I think is, is probably not the best journey sometimes, but it's, um, it's definitely served, served me well. And, um, so I um, then, after working at SC, um, actually Dave Salo found my next job. He was working on his PhD, and he came and said, "Terry, I, I found your next head coaching or your your next coaching job." And it was as a head coach at Fresno State University, and I wasn't going to take that job if I didn't make fifteen thousand dollars. And I caved, and for fourteen thousand dollars, I became the head coach in um, 1987. Um, at Fresno State University and originally started coaching the wi uh, women and then two years into it I um, uh, at, co got both the men's and women's job and there was a gentleman that swam for me at Fresno State that was on the team, um, the Cal team and um, I think Nort had had some challenges with him and he was from the Fresno area so he came back and swam for me and had done pretty well and when um, Karen Mo Thornton moved into administration the Cal job opened up, Nort gave me a call and I really think it's because of um, my uh, ability to handle this young man that um, uh, Nort, uh, Nort offered, uh, you know, offered an, an interview. and. Ironically, when it was time for me to go to school, my mom said I could go anywhere I wanted, in the, except the only place I couldn't go was Cal. So um, I, I uh, now have been trying, um, as George said, for 23 years now to convince other families that Cal is a good choice. And um, I, I, in, in that regard, I, I just, you know, I want to thank my, my Cal family and the people that um, there, that have been there in, in um, helping me achieve the, um, the success and build a program that, that we have. The, in particular, the first five or six years, I really didn't think I was going to make it. And there are definitely individuals that are still there and some that have moved on that really believed in me that I, I so appreciate. I had the opportunity in 2001 to serve on my first national team. Um, Colt Schulberg picked me to be um, an assistant on the Goodwill Games team, and that started an amazing journey as um, uh, a national team coach. And I remember just the first couple times just thinking like, oh my gosh, I've, I've spent my whole life in swimming and this is a whole nother level I don't even understand, you know? And, and um, just the, the different people, and in particular, I mean, there's so many, but um, I, I think Mark Schubert, I know Mark Schubert's an incre incredible mentor and helped um, support, support my dreams and uh, giving me ability to um, continue to, um, to grow in that area. And Frank Bush and Jack Bauer, and, I, and I'm so appreciative of, of that and, and their mentoring at, 
uh, um, in that regard. And I think the, the other people that, that is just the, the young women primarily that, and, that have trusted me and challenged me and inspired me for the last three plus decades. Um, you know, there are many women that, um, and swimmers that have an opportunity. I'm, I'm in a little bit unique situation, I think, in that um, basically I'm, I'm not really developing anybody. I'm kind of taking them and at, at sort of the twilight of their career. And, and I have such respect for the development phase. And what I love about being sort of that twilight coach is I, I love what sports has done for me personally, what I think sports can do for everybody and transition that into the, you know, the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, your, your real life after this is over. And, and um, I, there are countless, George mentioned, um, you know, some of the more obvious names that, that I've been linked to, but there are countless others that um, their journey has inspired me and, given me the so much joy I can't even um, put into words. And I, I think the other person I'd be remiss without thinking is my husband, Jerry. Luckily, um, God put his football seats next to mine in 2000, uh, I think it was about 2003, because it took me a year and a half. There was an Olympics going on there for me to kind of figure out what was going on. And luckily, he's a patient guy and stuck with me. And it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's so, um, special to be able to share this journey with you and share this night with you and and anyone in the room that's that's a coach and and um, you know a son of a coach a daughter of a coach um, a spouse of a coach you recognize that um, you know it's not a job it's a lifestyle and and I really honestly I didn't think I was going to get to experience that partnership that ultimate partnership and I just thank you so much for being willing to take all this on um, as well. And I just want to close with, um, I got to be on the Pampac st staff most recently, and you know, there's a lot of bus rides and little things that kind of go into that. And Bob Bowman and I were sitting in the front seat of the bus one day going to the pool, and a gentleman that was on the team, we will keep his name out of it because that's not important, but he started telling the people around him his life plan. This guy's a college freshman, you know, and his life plan, what his wife was going to do, when he was going to get married, how many kids they were going to have, what his job would be, what her job role would be. And finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. First of all, because he was kind of going a little bit into I would work and the woman would do this. And he, he, um, he has a, a sister that's in grad school. And I was like, what would your sister say if you were saying this? And, and, and then I, I finally just said, look, you know, when I was your age, I had a plan too. And you know what? That plan didn't work out. And the cool thing about it is that the plan ended up being, the reality ended up being way better than the plan. And, um, you know, I, 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 think, I think there's a lesson in all of that, it, or it, a lesson in that for all of us is like um, our strength coach used to say, live in the dream. And Terry McKeever is, is living the dream. And um, I just think everybody here for, for their support, and um, I hope there's a, at least a, a good decade or so left um, in the dream. I don't know, Jerry and I are negotiating that a little bit, but um, I, I, I hope there's some, some good years left of that dream, and um, this is definitely gonna be a night to remember, so thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.